getting the proper insurance, the do's and don'ts. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more. All right, so you've gotten your truck, you've gotten your plow, you've got your light bar. What else do you need? Insurance. Accidents can happen to anybody, anywhere, at any time, for any reason. Might not even be your fault, but when they break it down, they're gonna blame you. You need to have your car insurance. You're gonna get that when you buy your vehicle. And you wanna make sure that, that you get the right kind of car insurance. If you're just plowing your driveway, your driveway, all right, you don't need to get commercial insurance, most likely. Now you have to check with your insurance company because what I'm telling you is based on what I know with uh, information I've gotten from my insurance company. So you want to check with your insurance company. It's very important that you get the right kind of insurance because if something happens, God forbid, and you didn't get the right insurance, you might not be covered. So you want to be sure that you get the right insurance. Now, the first year I got this, I said, no, I'm just going to clean my drive. Well, I did. I, I did my neighbors. I didn't charge them anything. Just to get a feel for the plow, you know, kind of ease into this. The next year I said, well, I'm going to try and make some money. A few bucks on the side, whatever. So call my insurance company up, said, okay, I'm ready. Okay, now I need a commercial vehicle insurance because now this vehicle is going to be a commercial vehicle earning money. Uh, of course, the insurance companies want their cut of your profits. So, of course, I had to pay a little more for insurance. And then came liability. <gasps> yes, get liability insurance. This is where you will be protected the best because your automobile insurance will not cover you when you're plowing somebody's driveway and you uh, knock over a fence or break a mailbox or uh, God forbid uh, slide down the side of their car with your plow your liability insurance will so check out your options and absolutely be sure to get liability insurance if you're gonna do this commercially we're gonna get into another area that has to do with your insurance and that's salting my insurance does not cover me for salting it actually says in my policy that I am not covered for salting. And I have to mark down in every agreement that salting and de-icing is the responsibility of the customer. And I tell them up front, I am not covered for this liability and I am not taking responsibility for this work. That is up to you. I, am, I, I do snow removal, not ice removal. So you gotta make this very clear to your customers and this, this little simple fact, make it clear to your insurance company, might lower your premium because you're not gonna be responsible for people slipping on the ice. Now this works with residential and it's almost a must have. A lot of insurance companies won't even uh, cover you for salting for residential. So it's always best and you're gonna save yourself so many headaches if you just tell them, you want it salted, salt it yourself. Try and stay away from shoveling stairs. It's another issue, but definitely no salt, no de-icing. And if you do decide to do that, make sure it's in your, your, your insurance contract with your insurance company that you're covered. Because let's face it, slipping on the ice, everybody's done it. Now, if you're gonna do commercial parking lots like the one I'm in now, they most definitely tell you you have to salt. It's part of your contract, just not getting the work. So then, and also the doing commercial lots, getting insurance for commercial lots versus residential snow removal are two completely different things. Your commercial is gonna be a lot more expensive and it will include part in there about salting. All right, which may not, that's, you know, it may not include de-icing, but salting. That you have to come and regularly put down salt and you wanna make sure you're covered. You really don't wanna get into trouble. You don't wanna play craps with this because you could lose everything one person falls and you're kaput so always remember to check for your insurance very very important also in your agreement you want to make sure that you that you tell the, the the customers keep the driveway clear clear of garbage cans clear of the kids toys bikes skis uh, skidoos whatever you know what have you it's not your job to start cleaning their driveway so that you can go in and plow the snow so mark that in your agreement that they have to keep the driveway clear. You also might want to mark in your agreement that you 
that you're going to stay about 18 inches away from all obstacles. This is a good way to get them to keep their driveway clear. They leave their garbage can out, it's 18 inches. And it's not like I'm going to drive the plow around in and out of a garbage can. No. If I'm going through a driveway and there's a garbage can here, let's say halfway through, well, anything behind that garbage can towards the garage door or towards the house, that's not getting cleared. And if I can't fit my plow between the garbage can and the edge of the driveway because I'm going to hit something, then anything past that garbage can is not getting cleared. You have to make it very clear to your customers. You have to communicate with them. This is what I do. This is how I do it. This is the price I'm giving you. So you have to make sure that this area is clear so I can come in, clear the snow as efficiently as possible and get out and get on to the next customer. I say a thank you to, uh, to Steve Robb for his little mention in his little video. I have to say, I only got five minutes and the bullshit corner got 20 minutes or 15 minutes. I feel a little outdone here. I, mean, I got to drop an F-bomb here and there just to get a little more air time. Jeez. But anyways, I appreciate it, Steve. And this insurance thing has to do with something you said about fly-by-nighters. You know, they don't have the proper insurance. Today's business is cutthroat. It really is. And I can understand why a lot of guys will cut the corners. Won't get the liability insurance, you know, come in, clean the snow, take off, take your money and everything's good. As long as you're getting the service for what you want, that you paid for, you're okay, you're good. But if that guy does do damage to your house, your home insurance will cover you, but they have nobody to chase after. So you will have to pay the deductible if you have a deductible. So, you know, it's good. I always show as soon as I present my, myself to the customer, my contract's right on the top. Here's my insurance, you know, I'm all set. People really like that. Another thing I wanted to get to was uh, Everett. Thank you, Everett. This was, I meant to do this in a, in a video before and it completely slipped my mind. I wanted to talk about winter tires. Now, you own yourself your plow, you got your truck and you paid all this money on it and tires. Don't take your plow truck out on the road without winter tires. Please, guys. The most embarrassing thing for a plow truck is to be stuck in the snow. So get yourself good tires. Let's take a look at the tires I have. Okay, so I'm running Goodyear uh, Ultra Grip studded tires. And uh, where I am, I'm allowed studded tires up to 3,000 kilograms. So I use uh, Goodyear's Ultra Grip winter tires and I put studs in them, so they're studdable. But we also have a winter tire law here in Quebec where from December 15th till I think it's uh, March 15th, I'm not 100% sure, but we must have winter tires on our vehicle. Now I always start early. I usually put them on in November. These ones I put on last week because the plow truck I knew wasn't going to get much activity before then, so it wasn't really that much of a rush, but my van I do them a lot earlier. Now let's take a closer look at the tire. So just to give you a nice close-up view, you can see that winter tires are really pliable. It's still, it's pretty cool out right now. So they stay a lot more uh, rubbery, for lack of a better word, when the temperature starts getting really cold. And the studs, I know some people might say, oh, I don't want you to drive in my driveway with studs. But, uh, you know, I'm not driving, uh, your, your driveway's not like a highway. I'm coming in every couple of times. now. Yes, you want to avoid spinning your tires because these will mark a, pay, a, a driveway if you spin your tires. And you want to be careful of uh, the um, uni block type driveways because these will also mark them. So you want to be sure not to spin your tires and you'll be okay. You won't leave any marks. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel because we got some more stuff coming up. The next episode, um, I think, don't hold me to this, but I think we're going to do advertising, how to get yourself some of those paying customers. Till then, take care.